This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Hello, everyone. How are you going? Uh, doing much better now. So, uh, <laughs> we, we didn't do a show two weeks ago. Um, mm. As you know, we're kind of on this every two week schedule for the most part now. Because uh, yeah, my voice was gone. <laughs> oh, gone. Right. Yeah, this is what happens when you, uh, you know, you go back to the amusement park and you're having to talk for eight hours a day with a projected <laughs> voice and you're uh, not yeah. used to projecting over the crowds like that. <laughs> that will do it. Yes. Um, it's, it's surprising. If I've had a busy meeting day, like if I've been on video calls and stuff all day, um, I'm finding at the end of end of the day, my voice is my throat's really sore, and I just don't want to speak anymore. <laughs> yeah, the right? the interesting part is I'm still like dealing with the effects. I mean, I've had my voice back now for a week and a half, easy. Um, right. But like my basically my tongue is what feels like it's sore. It's like, and it feels like it feels like you know like weightlifting sore. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 your tongue is being like lifting 50 that's, exactly that's what, that's what it doing. feels like it's like it's not painful but it's like wow it's just doesn't feel flexible <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling the burn <laughs> of my tongue <laughs> my tongue up <laughs> but it's funny because like you know we you know when you're sort of locked away uh, at home you don't really have to get out there and talk to people like talking no. is it's highly overrated <laughs> well, and there's a certain uh, there's a certain manner of talking that I wind up doing, where it is again, I'm very much projecting my voice, but mm. it's also being that you laugh at everything and you're, you know, just being extra with how yeah. you're speaking, and you're speaking just nonstop. That yeah. I don't know that there's any way of really preparing for that i think it's you just got to be match fit yeah. really <laughs> it, it's it will be hard it would be really hard to essentially act for that long right know? right i mean i'm sure theater it's, people go through it all the time but oh yeah for sure uh and this exact same thing happened to me the, the last time when i first started the uh at the theme park so right. it's perfect you, you'll be right you'll, you'll build up your build up your strength again in your time exactly yeah. Exactly. Now, if I could just build up the uh, strength of the jokes that I used to have. <laughs> oh well, have you lost your game? No, I mean there's uh, there's certain banter that came back rather easily, but uh, there were certain jokes and situations that like come up enough that you just had a quick one always at the ready, and I'm having right. to relearn what those quick ones are. <laughs> So you actually like throw out a bit of a dad joke here and there to make them really smile genuinely. So you pretty get much. that on pretty much, right? Yeah, because otherwise yeah, you get right. a lot of uh, people taking photos like this. Oh really? Oh yeah. And uh -huh. and you're like trying to, uh, and then you and you go smile and they go. Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> really, so people have a hard time actually smiling when they're having Sometimes. their photo taken. Yeah, Sometimes it depends. You get other people that are just like immediately just like total hands and everything. But I mean, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. <laughs> there, there's, there's, it is a performance, and yeah, you you've got to play to the crowd. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and you and sometimes it. you can tell that the people are like hiding in their shell, and you just need to crack it open, and they'll come right out. Uh. And other times you're like, nope, that person is a brick wall, and we're not getting anywhere, so we're not even gonna try. <laughs> we're just gonna take this shot and move on. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, I've got an interesting thing that happened this week. So Force 2 is actually off at uh, the the service place at the moment. It is complete from my perspective. Now it just needs to get power conversion and other things so it doesn't burn down my house. <laughs> um, <laughs> which, you know, these African pins would do if you just chuck them straight onto power because number one, they're configured for 110 volts right. um so you got to do the the quick power of conversion but there's so many other things wrong with this one underneath the play field that yeah you gotta you gotta spend the money on these ones right. um but it gave me because i had to actually drop the table off at 
um, John Gris place. John is the specialist for Gottlieb here okay. in Brisbane, pretty much. I got to see his workshop. And this guy has got some amazing stuff in his workshop. Like he had, a, for a customer, he actually had a Ms. Pac-Man there, mm. which I'd never seen before. Um, but when you go into his workshop, he's actually got all these original test rigs. And one of them is a Gottlieb test rig um, that Gottlieb would use themselves to plug the boards in and work out which lamp matrix faults it had. Wow, so that's pretty legit. it was like, it was screen like you know, you, you know it's legit when you can match the font on the interface. It's like a fit, like a always like a keyboard, yeah, um, matrix interface with keys on it that you can press to actually activate the the lights. Wow, um, and it's screened and it's got like that Gottlieb font on it of the seventies and eighties, and it's like, wow, this is unobtainium stuff. That right, this guy has right. right? He's made up his own rigs for, for other games, which is essentially when you're making up a test rig, all you need to do is basically take the back box, um, the back box plate where all the lights are, and then just replicate the boards on there and then just connect them up to like bulbs and stuff like that to test transistors. That's essentially oh, what you okay. do. But he, he's got a whole pile of these set up in, in his workshop. It's quite incredible. Hmm. So it was a real treat to go and have a look at this place and see what uh, John's got, um, yeah, the, why why he is that good at fixing up machines. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. So I uh, one of the things we were planning on doing uh, last time was talking about the second wave of the uh, auction that happened with the uh, banning mm. collection. Um, and I've misplaced the link <laughs> oh, right. that listed all the final prices because uh, you couldn't go to the website anymore. But I, get, I think on pin side they got uh, addressed. But I was there was a, a, a Vice did a story about it. Oh yeah, and they were uh, talking about what the projected prices on some of these things were and everything. And I know that I think the highest price thing and I wish I knew what the table was, but it was I think forty two grand. 42 grand. Sorry, I have a banging blind here. No worries. Um, um, yeah, yeah. For, 42 grand. Yeah, so I'm very curious to know what that was. I'll have, to, I'll have to look it back up. Wondering if that was that magic girl or not. Uh, it probably would have been something pretty rare and unique. Yeah. Um, well, you'd hope so. Hopefully it wasn't something like a Twilight Zone where someone just went nuts. <laughs> right? No. Said, I have to have it. They did say no. that uh, all total, I think they earned... Six million, which was under what they were hoping. See, under they okay. wanted seven million at least. I think that's how much it was like what they were in the hole for. Wow, okay, yeah, geez, yeah, but that's uh, that's now it's gonna be a weed farm. Of, <laughs> it's a weed, yeah, okay, yeah, it's uh, it's time to grow the uh, the wacky tobacco, that's right. So mm. anyway, so that was that was uh, initially what our thought was. But I mean, it's also, you know, time passes and people stop caring. So uh, it wasn't exactly yes. hot, hot news anymore. Um, instead, today, what we have hot news. So uh, Zen just put out another uh, The Pinball Show, and mm. they had some things in that episode, uh, specifically introducing New Table, which is Snoopy on Zen Pinball Party. Oh, we will be playing that uh, live here. So mm. you can, uh, for those of you without the old Apple Arcade, you can get a sense of what this table is like. Spoiler alert, I'm calling it the best of these new tables that uh, has been produced so far. I'd probably agree as a TLDR. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's I mean, it's definitely still well produced. It's still simplistic in terms of you're not, there's not, you know, deep stacking of modes or anything, obviously. But no. the layout and the actual play and uh, kind of the basic rule set, it's better than what the other ones have been, as far mm. as I'm concerned. Again, I might be biased because the theme does hit me, but... <laughs> yeah, see, I'm not even really super engaged on the theme. Right. But I could still tell it's it's just a better balanced game yeah. um, than the other ones. Um, so anyway, we'll be we'll be taking a look at that. We are also going to be taking a look, and I think maybe we 
Maybe we'll start with this, Jared. Um, mm. Zen announced a new partnership with a virtual pinball cab maker, and that is mm. Skillshot Effects. Now, this is a company that apparently has been making uh, an in-home ski ball. Uh, yeah. I don't know Which whose home is good. big enough to hold a ski ball table, but... Oh, I've seen them. My people, people that have basement one up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they. I've seen some ski balls sitting right next to IK one up cabinets. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So anyway, uh, they have gone in licensed uh with uh, FX three is basically so kind of the same deal that uh, VB Cabs had in terms of licensing. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So I'm gonna bring up what the cab looks like here. There we go. There's our website. And as you can see, it, uh, it's kind of got a little uh, modern flair to it in terms of cab design. It doesn't look like your traditional boxy cab. Yeah. Um, I think it's on plinth. Plinth. There's a word. Yeah. A plinth. <laughs> mm. uh, it's kind of unusual. There's yeah. a reason why it's on that plinth, though. Yeah. Uh, 52 yeah. inch monitor for the play field. That's big. I don't know what the back glass is, but that's a back glass monitor also. I'd say about 20. Um, don't know if there's any other information. Oh, look, video. We can let that uh, wee, play that a little bit, huh? Um, yeah. And that's, it's got a, a you can kind of see this is their custom interface designs. So they have volume controls right on the top. Uh, Back button view. It's the obvious place to put it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and right? I like it how they. I and it's. I've. I like how they've actually integrated that into the lockdown bar, not as a panel that then right. takes up real estate. That right. should be a. It's, it's a, a right here. Note. Right. And they're yeah. nice and flat, so it's not like you can accidentally hit the buttons. And see how they've got a nice inset for the monitor. It's got that actual playfield mm -hmm. slant on it. Mm -hmm. It's a, got a, actually a rake on the playfield, which really does make a difference to perception yep in the game so they've they've taken some some design cues probably from other digital pinball tables let's yeah. be honest um but it's got the bones of something pretty nice and it looks really nice like yeah. it's a nice looking cabinet yeah it is a nice looking cabinet and uh what was the other thing oh i know that it also they send it with one of those little tiny controller interfaces with a full keypad so that yeah. if you're doing dealing with because it's hooked up with steam i mean it's obviously got a yeah, PC it is inside. A steam based um so that you can still you know do all the basic functions anything that's not going to function with this you know interface here this interface is basically just for you know obviously once you have it set up pay people can come play voila they're done it, it really is designed to be used with fx3 they've done some integration that allows you to adjust volume and they've got right. view buttons and stuff in there right. so that they've kind of keyed that part of the panel just to FX3. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Those are the good points. Mm. Oh, it apparently comes with <laughs> comes with back glasses. Oh, custom back glasses. Right. Well, I mean, I don't know if they made them themselves or if Zen did. I would... Zen, when you come out with pin effects, please, for the love of God... Provide back glasses. Animated yes. back glasses would be even better. <laughs> With approved art on them. Right. So that it so it makes the licenses happy. Because I would think <laughs> that and, and I'm this is something that when we get a chance to talk to Mel, I, I'm sure we'll want to address. But if they can do mm. the video screen for the DMD now, they can certainly do full size animated back glass. And where it would be yep. really cool is and I think this may be a stretch, but with our alphanumeric tables um, that don't have a, the DMD area, like Funhouse fills up basically where the DMD was, right? Yes. Yeah. But you do something like Space Station, and it's got the four slots. I think I'm correct yeah, on that. Yeah, it's got the four glasses, yeah. basically, where the displays are. Right. Yeah. So I would love it if they could start reproducing the back glasses in that manner and have them and yeah. have them do that way. But the main thing is, is to not make us have to provide back glass so that every single time a new table is created, that then we have to go through that whole rigmarole and everything. Anyway, just saying, if you can do it yeah. for these guys, 
do for us at home, too. Um, That's right. Yeah. So, the things that I'm noticing here, and I'm sure this stands out to you, too, Jared. Mm -hmm. No manual plunger. No. And that second uh, flipper button, that is for nudge. So... Yes, that's not no that's accelerometer. Not for your second flippers, it is for nudging. Which that's, that's no it's good. unfortunate, <laughs> but okay. I I guess the, the the nudge factor I can kind of understand because that's kind of like if you look at what At Games has done with their Legends Pinball, that's exactly what's happening. Um, mm. And I think. Maybe that's. I think a... that's another reason why, and yeah, it's because of the plinth. <laughs> the plinth <laughs> would make it very hard to twist the table, yes, and actually make an accelerator, uh, accelerometer register. Right. So the unfortunate part is how do you? It needs to be on legs. How do you register an up nudge? You can do side to side nudges, but how do you register an up nudge? I don't know. They they need to be some sort of switch on the. The, um, the the lockdown bar. See, that's honestly that's the obvious place to put the buttons or switches, <laughs> like integrate it into the the lockdown bar because the lockdown bar wouldn't be coming off, no. um, like you would have traditionally on a pinball machine. So you could, if you were smart, you would actually devise a system that had micro switches in the nudge bar, and that would be where the tilting would happen. And that's the logical place for it. you. You could still have the game on a plinth um, or legs or whatever, and the nudge bar becomes your interface. Now, right. that would be the smart money. That's what I'd do if I was designing one. Yeah. Um, so those are the two obvious things. Uh, we don't know what this is running on in terms of PC video card specs. Um, I'd, which... say, I'd speculate probably because they're accessible at the moment. Um Probably like an Nvidia sixty, like sixteen eighty or something like that. Possibly. They're readily available, but it's kind of a bummer that they're not. I, I mean, I was looking all over their website and I couldn't find any mention of this. Um, but because it is Steam based, obviously you're going to be able to run any other Steam game on here that you want. And mm. in that eventuality, that when uh, Pin FX becomes available on Steam. I want to know what the video card is because it would suck if it's not up to snuff for the new thing. I don't know. Especially, I'm they're not using something like one of those small form factor gaming PCs inside it. You know, the ones that are essentially like a like an Alienware, right. um, or like a ROG twenty nine or something. You know, one of those smaller form right. factor things that are all in one. I mean, that would make sense from a build and materials perspective because it's easy enough to get those but that would limit your upgrade possibilities yeah um and the reason why i say that that's a shame that we're not finding out that information at the most i'm i don't know maybe we need to uh fire off an email and be like hey guys fill us in <laughs> but mm. the huge sticking point to me the price tag yeah this puppy's it's, it's nine not eight or nine Nine thousand dollars, folks. Yeah, it's ah. the price of a new inbox stern. It's a uh, that's a. I think that's my biggest shocker is that for yeah. nine thousand dollars we can't get a physical plunger. Yeah, we can't get a physical plunger, and we can't get accelerometer tilt. That's... That is just, just unacceptable. And so, like... here's. Do you think this has anything to do with the licensing agreement that they have with Arcade One Up? Oh, like hardware wise, uh, the, the actual cost. The actual no, cost. no. In terms of, in terms of their license with Arcade One Up, does Arcade One Up have a deal where it's like, hey, yeah, you can license this to everybody else, but the nudging and the manual plunger are ours, to hmm. you know, software wise. I wonder, because the, the thing is that I I don't think that the the build that they've got in RK1 obviously is the Android version. It's a custom build yeah. um, for them. 
Yeah, this is the um, Steam build. Custom and, interface. And with the Steam build, I can use my accelerometer. You know, obviously with my my pin sim, I have physical plunger. I have the ability to use accelerometer. Yeah, you do. I don't. I don't know. I, it's just a weird. It's a weird choice. That's all I'm saying. That 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 this isn't here for that price point because there are mm. many other uh, digital pinball platforms that have those things. Um, That's right. For they, like you know uh, uh, about two percent of the cost yeah. of this as well. <laughs> they so. do have um, solenoids for the flippers. But there was no mention of solenoids anywhere else on the table. So again, that's something that maybe we need to reach out. Um, I was gotta understand, folks. The pinball show it came out yesterday. <laughs> yeah, we're reacting to it now, so I haven't had a time to uh, actually uh, reach out and communicate. Um, that's that's right. So we're we're sort of yeah, it's pretty fresh, pretty yes. fresh news. This is just so, us us reacting. <laughs> yeah, reacting right. videos, man. That's what I should title these videos, Jared. Chris and Jared react like react to anything. Yeah. Just react because those apparently get all the hits. Uh, yeah, that's right. So anyway, everyone wants opinions, right? <laughs> Even if they're lame. Um, yeah, that's right. Of course, which has arms. <laughs> but I mean, like I said, I I think the design factor is is interesting. Um, it sets it apart mm. from looking. I mean, you know, you're not having to deal with pinball legs or whatever. It also means you don't get to adjust anything. But I'm sure it's of a standard pinball height, so there's not much adjustment that you normally would be doing anyway there's um, a nice neon or led light strip underneath it too so you mm -hmm. get that you know that stuff underneath yeah um which is nice again th that's why they wanted the plinth although they could have they could have easily worked around that with with legs and just putting a skirt underneath the play field as well but this is at least making it their own you know what i mean uh <laughs> jared's gotta do the speckle <laughs> wipe um yeah no, this is this is, it, it's making it their own, and obviously you can see here with it right next to the uh, the ski ball in the background goes with their product line. You know what I mean? So there's a design. It's aesthetic. definitely toned in. Oh yeah, yeah it definitely is. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I. So if if this is basically so if you are a slingshot fan, then this will fit nicely in your game room. Yeah. Now you'll and notice I bet says, you the price of that ski ball isn't cheap either. So <laughs> I'd say you've got pretty deep pockets if you're right? if you're using this as your arcade room supply. Well, if you can afford that loft. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> loft in New York City. Uh, it says also 96 different pinball games. The only things that are missing from that list are the Jurassic Park tables. Okay. Which you can still add in on your own. So I'm assuming that this comes preloaded with them, maybe? I think, because it says right out of the box. So it looks like you get a license entitlement to those tables. It's really It makes sense. Again, that's what uh, mm -hmm. uh, VP Cabs was doing also. Yeah. So anyway, hit us up. Let us know what you guys think about, uh, about this new entry into the uh, virtual space. Um, obviously, it doesn't cost... Zen a dime to do this. This isn't taking anything out of them. This is them being commissioned <laughs> or, or or signing a license. That's about the the scope yeah. of it. Um, this is this is a another example of how you actually license that program correctly, right? Um, to, like to conform with the EULA. So they've done it. It's I don't suspect that the price is reflecting any license engagement. No, I feel um, it's building costs. It's really building because there's some premium premium materials used on mm -hmm. that. Like, it looks like nice wood. Well, because they said that they're so, also not using, you know, the cheap buttons. I mean, again, button. We're, yeah. we're talking the difference couple between bucks. a couple of bucks and, you know, $8. A buck. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. I mean, it, it, ultimately, that's not what you're dealing with. But, I mean, a 52-inch screen, though, that's pretty... Mega. That's um, big. That's bigger than most digital pinball builds. Most of them are doing that would the, 40, put it, the 40 inch screen, right? Yeah. yeah. That'll almost put it into like a wide body or super wide body scale. Yeah. As well, which is interesting. And again, video cards um, aren't cheap right now. So, 
they're not. We've seen. I was. This is what I was wondering. If they're using a good spec PC in there and uh, like a Nvidia three three thousand series card, then that's about you know two or three thousand dollars right there mm -hmm. at the moment because of you know processor shortages. Yeah. Um, so you know, there's a fair chunk of change caught up in that, but then you know maybe add on a thousand dollars for the screen yeah um so you know you got you got about halfway there to eight grand so yeah you know i i can see why it is the price it is but i can't see too many of these walking off the shelf yeah at that <laughs> price. when well when you can literally go to ebay or like alibaba and get a knockoff for like a an eighth of that price and get a pretty decent spec yeah for that so all right moving on uh i promised a report on the uh the beer it has been cracked open it was consumed a little bit by the wife uh turns out she hasn't had a drink of beer in many a year either so it was <laughs> oh. not like the uh the the flavor was uh you know or, or not the flavor. The the tongue was of the uh, educated type. variety. Yeah, the connoisseur variety. Um, but her initial impression tasted like Coors Light. <laughs> 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 okay. To which I went, wait a second. What happened to the hints of pineapple and mango? I think they were saying, and she's like, nah, I don't know. It tastes like Coors Light. <laughs> oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> See, if they could somehow get some of this stuff down to me, I drink enough craft beer through Netherworld that I could probably give it a, a somewhat more cri different critique. I right, You're, you might actually have the palate. To me, it's it's the, it's like the people that do the wine tasting, right? If I like, take a sip of like wine, grapes. I'm like, yep, that's <laughs> wine, and not sitting there going, oh, it's got a nice earthy tone to it with hints of whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can taste that it was definitely the the, the vines were definitely growing on the the, the shady side of the hill. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> Boy, that's a ponce kind of uh, comment, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> all right. So that was that. Uh, oh, all right. Let's get into the Snoopy gameplay. And yeah, all right. then we'll get into the uh, the old the, the giant logs that were thrown onto the speculation fire. <laughs> That's right, in the latest pinball show. Yes. So let me get my phone ready to do a little uh, Snoopy action here. Um, I'm going to apologize for the volume again because I know that last time it was rather Super loud. loud. Yeah. So drop your volume down now. And if you're listening in the podcast, here's your chance to go now and have a look at the YouTube channel and look at this episode, uh, which you'll see in the show notes. Yes. Um, so just go to the show notes, click on that, and you'll get the link directly to the video. All right. So here we go. Snoop the Pinball. As you can see, I've already gotten two stars on it. I haven't gotten uh, beyond that. I've only played mm. this a little tiny bit, but let me uh, just uh, fire this up and... Let you see what's what. Mm. Like first thing it hits me, I really love the cell animation they're using this. Yes, very much like the Bob's Burgers South Park style um, that they've they've done. Obviously not with that particular artist artistic side. It's very faithful to Peanuts. Yeah, I mean especially here with Woodstock like, and that and that nest. Um, yeah, that's. That's just, really, really on point. Good choice of what to make 3D uh, versus what to make cardboard. Yes. Essentially. Yeah. Um, from what I'm understanding, this is based on the 80s <laughs> version? Yes, of... the 80s comic strip era. Which, uh, I mean, I did grow up reading that. So, oh, I don't know. <laughs> you probably didn't catch what they just said. Every single time you launch the ball, you get... Charlie Brown saying, everybody has to leave home, which is just really mm. odd to me. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a, there's another call out in this game when I was playing it, which was odd as well. Shoot for um, Snoopy's doghouse. See if you Start can get it. Uh, see if you can get multi-ball 
and and listen to the call out that's oh. said there. I, okay. I don't yes. Know I, there's another it's... call out that I know that that is uh, has to do with uh, when you get the bonus multiplier. Okay. So right off the bat, though, there it said we had our call out and it said shoot for Snoopy's doghouse for main modes. Thank you, Zen. Here we go. Thank like, you for this is instructions to the player. Yes, you were paying voice actors. Oh, oh look at that drain. And uh, it doesn't cost much to actually have them tell you to do something. And there are callouts no. uh, throughout the game to tell you what to do. So let me. Uh, yep, it's great. Let me see if I can. Hit it's it's so good to hear that sort of house. guidance. So there we go. Hey, look at that. Doghouse turns, and then you launch again. It was a dark and stormy night. We get to do that. Um, I'll just do dogfight do? for the sake of doing dogfight. The thing that, that, that right there is the thing that I dislike about the table. What's that? And that is it, it ejects the ball without any flashing light or sound. Yes, because so you're not quite sure where it's coming from. Yeah, and that's a real surprise. Seek out the red baron and bring him ball. down. Yeah, that's, that's design 101 when it comes to pinball. Yeah. I should tell Seek you out the red baron and bring him down. So this is your classic hit the magnetic ball kind of action, except for this is no magnetic. Seek out the red baron and bring him down. Hope to play with. <laughs> yeah. Gee, that's a. Oh, oh and, I uh, hate that red baron. Dream Don't worry, and that's, you'll get him next and time. That's how you drain. That's. And I'm gonna say this game, a lot of drains. <laughs> it's not super easy. It's no. not as. Easy as the other ones that are in the uh, animated heroes collection home. in um, Sim People Party. Yeah. So there's that call out again. Everyone has to leave home. Yeah. There must be Would meaning behind that. It'd be interesting to, to speak to uh, the designer about oh, right. it and why that call out was there. Let's right. Speak to Dolby. Right Dolby's right the one that uh, designed this one. Dolby was I'd featured in this, uh, this latest uh, Pinball Show episode. Yes, it was. It was actually good to hear from one of the designers and, yeah. you know, had them participate in the show and he's one of these, as, a, as a major role. He's one of the designers that's been with Zen for a little while and just recently uh, got promoted to designer. Mm. So good on him. Congrats, Dolby. Yeah. So I kind of like the idea, actually, if um, this game here, the Zen Pinball Party, is being used as a again? Uh, proving ground, Congrats. you might say, for the new designers. Oh, without a doubt. It's it's a chance for them to actually cut their teeth on a release from Soup to Nuts and, to and see how it performs. So, yeah, I have no doubt that's exactly what they're doing here. Lock the ball! Um, do you have... Here's a question for you, Chris, when you're playing this game. How do you find the shot mode. off that upper left flipper? Very difficult. Really hard? Very difficult. Really hard. Yeah. I just cannot I cannot get the timing on it. Okay, I'm gonna I'm try. I'm sure and... I would be able to. Um oh, shoot. but it is ah! seriously hard to get the timing on it. Yeah. Um I'm, I I'm I wanna try and raise the multiplier to to show what I'm hearing and see if this is what Jared was talking about night, also. Pal. See you in um, the morning. So let me try and do that. The skill shot is very difficult to to nail because you can't see one of the lanes <laughs> yeah that's the other complaint I've about this game it's like the um the kite eating tree is obstructing the lights at that particular view i'm sure if you change the view and made it flatter you might be able to see it but the thing is that at the, the thing that i find Everyone is that if me, this would be you a perfect have world. a design element like that it needs to be visible at all angles like it it got to have it visible um, so a lot of the time, you know, in some Go of the Kelly Williams tables, they, the they had some obstruction issues in the rollover lanes. Like, for example, um, uh, Theater of Magic, what they did to work around that is put mirrors up there so you could actually see them, which is right. a nice sort of cheap workaround. In this case, it's really quite impossible because the tree is rather <laughs> opaque and it covers a huge amount of upper playfield area. Um, looks good thematically, no dogs allowed. but if it obstructs a playfield, a play, uh, like an actual gameplay element, then for my money, it's not good. It's not an effective thing to put in there. Oh my god! Lost again? I like the um, the really Rats. clear scrolling light patterns um, 
on all the um the shots you need to take they're very obvious which ones you need to shoot yes. in this too so it's really good really good Everyone feedback to the player again um, we've talked about that with just insert lights Lock in the general, ball. that uh yeah it, it's Shoot nice Snoopy's when doghouse to start a zen main embraces mode. uh traditional oh, pinball brother. design yes because and that I makes for better light more shows more. well it does make for better light shows yeah and we're seeing this more in in these newer tables now there you know we've actually got inserts with text on them we've got um like more light shows like this that actually have clear like you really know what shot to take it's very much a Rats. um there's no doubt what you need to shoot and you know the voice call outs also help as well yeah i just realized um, jared can't hear any of the what i'm playing everyone <laughs> no, has I, to I, I can't at all <laughs> so, <laughs> so i'm just gonna have to tell jared when to shut up so that we can actually hear what <laughs> i'm trying to highlight um okay one more for collecting the multi uh, multiplier and then because i think everybody will hear what it says here we go multiplayer raised right so it says multiplayer raised not multiplier multiplayer <laughs> multiplier yeah uh! no it says multiplayer like, well, multiplayer. It, it goes yeah. multiplayer raised. It's like that, no, that's, that's the, the multiplier. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the one that I was. It actually wasn't the multi ball. It no. was that call out that yeah. I went. Uh? So there was uh, something a little bit lost Some in translation. Lost. <laughs> yeah, I think someone misread the script there. That yes. needs to be re-recorded. Because <laughs> you will hear it. Uh, like if I've heard mode. it, you'll hear it multiple times. Yeah. So. So yeah, that upper left flipper is a bear. It really is. It's if so everyone hard to listen get it. to me, this would be a um, perfect world. And look, it's like, and those drains. I'm, I'm telling you, man, there. This is a side drain hungry table. And me it playing really on is. the phone, I'm not nudging. Everyone has to leave home. <laughs> no. So you know, the the whole nudging mechanism is is tricky on mobile. Yeah. Um, it's probably better if you got an Apple Arcade with a joy pad. Yeah, um, and oh, by the way, folks, uh, one of the bug fixes that came with this uh, update that added this, uh, they did make it no so that dogs allowed. Uh, if you're using a controller that you can remap the buttons to use the shoulder buttons rather than uh, the trigger buttons. Oh, that's good. Yeah. For those people who are triggered by shoulder buttons. Yes. Yes. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So this is tricky because we're trying to uh, Stupid dog. do exactly oh, not that. Avoid oh, Lucy. You don't want to hit. You don't want to get Lucy. Yeah. So I'm trying to. You want to get that scrolling lane. Wait for her to disappear like, there. It's funny, you know, that that scrolling. Ooh, we nearly got it. You just. Uh, Slide borked. Yeah. Bork. There we go. Oh, there you go. We gotta catch it again. Right, let's see if we can get this one. Oh, so oh close. great. There you go. There we go. Up to the tree next. Stupid oh. dog! Oh, hit her instead. And that was. I botched the mode. And that's the thing, like, these modes look deceptively simple, but they're not really. You do have to think. Yeah about uh, what you're doing in them. Hit the home base saucer. Okay, so again, there is nice where it's like, it told me to hit the home base saucer. Um, you know, look for something. You just activated, a, oh, and then out the drain. Ah! You just activated something. <laughs> Go and shoot it. Go and shoot it. But unfortunately, and this is again where the game gets tough, do you think it stays lit? No. Everyone has to leave home. It does it. not stay lit. So Lock in the, the ball. In the case of me hitting the home base button, well, Shoot now we've got to hit the start a main mode. baseball again a couple of times. Because I'm going to show and you the, the playfield. It's a little drainy. Because that the baseball is how you actually access the upper playfield. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. And that's one of those ejects that if you don't raise your flipper, oh. it's a center drain. Yeah, you've got to tip tip catch it or tip divert it Snoopy oh, supper geez. time oh look time to feed Snoopy yeah. 
So, you know, basically your your lane chase. There you go. So you shoot a lane, then shoot the um, the kennel. And that's how you feed Snoopy. That was nearly a Shats pass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was... Well, Go suddenly my, my phone is slowing down. <laughs> oh, you must be overheating. Yeah, you I, have a, I think you I'm have overheating. A, um, a thermal issue with your phone. You, See you in the Which is okay, because it's game over. It's game over. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna let it uh, live at that. <laughs> be game over. Mm. Um, anyway, it's, it's... It's a peaceful table. It doesn't feel frantic. Um, no. I don't believe there's really, other than... I don't really think that there's much hurry-up mode action. Uh, the call-outs are pretty good. Uh, mm. And the shots are varied as to when you need to take them and what you need to do. So those are all positive design choices uh, in my book. Um, like, it's actually a... It's a, it's a fan reverse Lawler. If you think about it. <laughs> a fan reverse Lawler. Interesting choice. Well, because the flip is on the left-hand side. Yeah. Not the right, right. Um, so, yeah, it's a uh, an interesting. It's a, I think it's a solid first design. It is from from Dolby. I think he's done a really good job. And like I said, of the four, or now this would be the the fifth uh, of the five tables that have been made exclusive for the Apple Arcade uh, Zen Pinball Party. I think this one uh, so far has been the most enjoyable to me, uh, and offering so the most gameplay. Here's the interesting thing. I gave I gave the iPad to the kids the other day. Oh yeah. And I got them to I got them to try it, um, and it was interesting. Um, let me just close my window because this blind is clogging. There you go. Solve that problem. Um, so the I gave it to Sienna first, and I let her just explore the tables. Got her to play Snoopy um first because it was the the newer one and she said oh yeah it's it's really quite hard i'm having trouble you know actually getting the flipper to do what i want it to do okay um and i'm admittedly i'm you know, i'm using this on a a hand-me-down ipad air 2 um so it's not one of the most powerful ipads out there um and it is old now it's updated to the latest software but it's still an old hardware configuration um so i gave it to um zach next and he gave snoopy a go once but then he just immediately just ignored them and went straight to williams pinball and started playing all those tables instead and so i said oh, it'd be really good if you could actually you know give me the feedback on 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 the other ones because i'd like to like talk about it on the show and he goes, oh, okay. So he reluctantly went back and played some of the other ones, but you could see he just wasn't into it <laughs> at all. Like he he wanted to play the Williams tables. He wanted to play specifically um, the getaway. I was going to say, now granted, you've taken your kids to a pinball arcade, so they're familiar they, with the real things too. They are familiar with the real things. Yeah. And he he was more he was more gravitating towards the the original yeah. tables. Um, uh, sorry, the um the the Williams tables, not the animated heroes and he's 11 a lot of those tables are very young yes um so they would probably appeal more to sienna's age group and this is interesting right because this is clearly what zen's going for they the the animated heroes tables appeal to a certain age group um and the other tables in the collection um appeal to older kids like zach um and again the difference between my kids age is two years so sienna's eight zach's 11. yeah so there's not a big age difference yet the tasting games is really really different so it shows that the strategy here seems to be a sound strategy mm -hmm. to actually include different titles for different strokes for different folks and start appealing right? to all ages yeah yeah, that's right. So that demonstrates that it, it's definitely true. Like, there's something in there for everyone. Yeah. Um. Okay, so that was Zen Pinball Party. And like I said, mm. it's good to see that they're actually addressing some of the, the fan feedback uh, in, uh, mm. in a semi-timely manner. I mean, obviously, you know, there was a big patch for this, so why not throw that into the uh, 
the patch, mainly being that they said there were general bug fixes, but uh, again, the controller support was a was a big one. I know for for people. Um, yes. So it's good to see they were addressing that. Uh, other thing that happened in this latest pinball show. They <laughs> they had Dolby interview two of the gentlemen from Spooky Pinball. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Now, it was done under the auspices of, hey, it's Halloween, and you guys have a Halloween table. Let's talk about that for a little bit. But I believe how it was random. the last episode. Me and Jared were talking about how, you know... With that video screen coming up, it would make sense to team up with a more independent pinball designer like Spooky, where it would be beneficial to both parties to do digital pinball. Uh, raise yeah. the profile of Spooky, and then also give Zen, you know, some of these licensed real-world tables to to mess with. Uh, and here we Lo get and this behold. interview. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. It interesting it was like throwing a couple of very large speculation logs on a speculation fire <laughs> um yeah a slowly burning speculation fire so now it's raging yeah because it's not uh, like zen has had i don't believe they've had anybody conducted interviews that have been made public to everybody from stern have they mm-hmm no. No. N no, never. They, they've not ever put another pinball company's stuff uh, it, it, and put their label on it. Yeah. Because like we were saying, this if you paired up with Spooky, if you paired up with American Pinball, because let's face it, Stern does not need Zen. They no. don't. They're doing just fine. They don't. <laughs> they've, they've got their own thing going on there. Yeah. Um, and... They they are well and truly cemented in the marketplace now. They, and they, they might don't need the they might still be feeling burned with Farsight. Um, yeah, so to which, where again it becomes, well, what are you offering us? But I think Zen is also looking at this from the point of, hey, this is a two way street. You've got to be offering us something too. Uh, yeah, you know, to, absolutely beyond just the name, you know. So. Mm -hmm. There's where it was like, yeah, American Pinball, Spooky, um, you know, who a Dutch pinball, although I don't know if they're really producing anything beyond. <laughs> but anyway, you got what yeah. I'm saying, where these smaller companies um, might be more lucrative to attach well, yourself. Got, you know, the, the Aussie guys down here, Haggis. Oh, yeah, who, Haggis, who, exactly. Who have released, who who will be releasing um, Fathom. Um, Fathom and currently have Celts. Yeah. Um, or Celts. Celts. However you like yeah. Celts out there. Which apparently is quite a surprising sleeper hit for those people who actually play it. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're doing all the right things down and here. I also found it interesting because in the show, Rose was wearing a Viking costume. And they mm -hmm. asked, and she was like, oh, what's a table that I would love to see? I'd love to see a Viking table. American Pinball just announced Valhalla. <laughs> they did. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know how many Easter eggs are getting thrown or lobbed into these shows, but the coin seems to me that there's... <laughs> it seems just a little bit too coincidental yes. to ignore. Yes. I, you know, I, I didn't actually take pay a lot of attention this month to the back wall. The back wall didn't really change from last time. That it didn't, I no, it didn't, didn't really change, but they didn't need a back wall this time because I think we can pretty much assume from that interview, FX will contain some real world boutique manufacturer pinball machines. Now, um, the, the interview that they put up with the pinball show was a truncated interview. Uh, I did not watch the full interview. Jared, you said you did. I, was did, there more yes. info to be gleaned from the full interview? Yeah, so the, the section that you saw included in the pinball show just focused on the Halloween table yeah. and the design the design approach to that table. Yeah, how it came um, about. How it came about, um, which was fine. That that made up about four minutes of the 26-minute interview. Um, so the 26-minute the interview touched on things like, you know, how 
is there a pinball scene in um, Benton, Wisconsin? Um, the short answer is mm, not really. Um, is there like how hard is it to like keep staff and actually find the right staff there um, in Benton? And the answer is it's difficult. There's a fair bit of churn, so they get they they go from oversubscribed like too many people to not enough people. Mm. So it's hard to keep the staff levels at a constant um there they also said though that you know if you want to get into pinball move to benton the reason being is that if you kind of rock up within reason to spook your pinball and say hey i want a job i want to make a start in the pinball industry chances are you'll get a gig there and it could actually be the start of a career in pinball hmm. for you because you start off on the production line you cut your teeth there um you know bug i think um said that there's around 15 different jobs that need to be done in the business probably ranging from you know assembly line worker to sort of running the show which is yeah. sort of what um bug's doing now that he's graduated high school <laughs> I heard um, that when he said i graduated high school and he's like holy crap i'm so old yeah he's like literally <laughs> like they started the business when he was just a teenager Jeez. um i remember him being on the spooky pinball podcast show um talking about it and um you know i i stopped listening to the show about three or four years ago but like he he was growing up with pinball um and while charlie his father was like spinning this business up from nothing basically yeah. and building into what it is today where they're they pretty much went from i think rick and morty was 750 units and they doubled the amount of pinball machines for this um current run of um halloween the kaiju ultra uh, and hell and yeah the ultraman and um and the uh the current one that they got on the line here that they featured so that was sort of like interesting a little bit of inside baseball stuff really that they were talking about but the really interesting part came towards the end of that video and that was when they started talking about uh, so they they flipped around the the interview and and spooky started asking questions of zen oh okay. or like commenting on stuff of zen and one of those things was so they only really this is this is what they were saying in the video i i think this was more a bit of a for the benefit of the video this is how they spun it but they were saying that hey you know they were introduced to zen zen's fx3 product oh you know just by chance about you know four or so months ago now what <clears throat> wait yeah they had no clue about zen pinball prior to that apparently so yeah i call shenanigans um, okay go on shenanigans on that <laughs> um so and um i think i'm sorry i've forgotten the uh, the 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 other person on the the interview you might be able to remember Chris, I, uh, his name. I don't. But um, but he was saying that he's the one who found it, and then he went and showed Bug, um, this uh, the, basically what FX3 was all about, mm -hmm. and they they openly admitted to saying, "Wow, like the way that you do theme integrations has kind of inspired us about what we could potentially do in the future for." our tables and how we actually integrate themes and they were acknowledging that while you know they can't have in the case they actually identified jaws actually as mm -hmm. a table that really blew them away at how good the theme integration was like they were commenting on the fact that you know the shark swims around jumps out of the water and and really sort of makes a big appearance now and they're going look you know we while we obviously we can't make a jump a, a shark jump out of the water um, on a real pinball machine, we can think about the type of ways that we could do something similar with mechanisms in the play field to mm -hmm. actually really t more tightly integrate themes. And they made an open comment that said, look, based on what we saw from your collection of catalog and how you integrate themes, it has inspired us for the next table that we're producing. So we're really basically going to be taking a lot of the integration sort of cues that you've done in a lot of your digital tables 
And we're going to be putting that into the way we think about designing the next table, which apparently they're even more excited about than the current ones they've got. Let me swipe my screen. Yeah. Um, so, so there is the bit to me that sounds like um, cue the commercial collaboration. Um, they are going to be working closely between Zen and um, and Spooky Pinball. The next table that they produce, I have a feeling, will debut physically and digitally. That's my call. Okay. That's what I got from this interview. It sounded like the like the fact that they were openly admitting that they were going to basically steal some ideas from Zen sure. in their in their next tables is like, hmm. That's well, very the, interesting. Imagine if if you were doing a collaboration of sorts, right? Mm. Where they're just trying to figure, let's say that Jaws is the collaboration, okay? Mm -hmm. Wherein they're looking at, oh, hey, Zen can do anything because it's all animated. We want to figure out how to do a mechanical version. And that's how it gets released. Like, you want the mechanical? Here's the mechanical version. You want the more fantasy? Here's the Zen version. Right, mm. so it's not necessarily that Zen is having to replicate uh, what physically would happen on their machine, but it's the spirit with which it happens. So on Zen, you do have the shark coming up and, and swallowing or whatever, and on theirs, it would be something where it's you know who knows you know let's say a scoop pops up and you know to capture the ball, that kind of Ex thing. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Or but it would make for of... it would make it like what you're saying to be able to do a say day and date release where you have a digital version and you have a mechanical version the two are separate yep. not competing with each other but the layout is virtually the same the licensing would be the same the artwork would be the same uh and yeah. that means zen wouldn't have to have the physical product and mapping it all out you know kind of thing to to again do that one-to-one -one ball play integration it's it's an interesting idea of of how to get around that idea of, oh, if we put it out on digital, it's going to cannibalize our market share. Yeah, which the thing is with with spooky pinballs, and this is a good point that um, Dolby raised in the interview, is like he's never played one because they're just not available in Poland. Right. Um, so, you know, for, from that perspective, and we've said this countless times before on the show, you know, getting your product into a good quality digital pinball um, designer like Zen and allowing people to play the game without having access to it necessarily, that's that's one marketing strategy you can use to sell tables. Now, the problem with a lot of the spooky tables is they often sell out in two hours. Right, exactly. So, so very few people are going to get get their hands on them. Very few people. The only the only reason why I've had the luxury of playing spooky tables is that Netherworld seems to be a fan of them and yeah. they get them in. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, I would not have had a chance to play Rick and Morty um, at all, which would have been a real a real shame because I really love the table. Um, but you know, the, their back catalogue is large enough now that they could have. We have a spooky pinball section in FX, mm -hmm. and imagine, and uh, imagine also. I'm sure Spooky uh, felt a little bit of the hurt of not getting Godzilla. Yes. Uh, so I'd imagine say. if you have the licensing acumen of Zen backing you up. Yeah. Then that's the other thing that was touched upon in the. You can infer from that last part of the Zen interview with with Spooky is the fact that, wow, that the the licenses you've been able to get, and the th way you've integrated those licenses into the product, is incredible. Is what they were saying. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, well, here's Spooky's gateway basically into licensing that they would not be able to get their hands on because they were saying that you know. The Sterns, they tend to go to, you know, Columbia TriStar or, you know, Marvel or mm -hmm. whoever, you know, and they've got those relationships. But for someone like Spooky to get anywhere near those, 
you know, it's you have to sort of go kind of cap in hand begging yeah. uh, to go and get anyone to speak to you even. But the thing is that Zen's already got that relationship built. Yeah. And, you know, it's easy for them to go in and just, you know, have these conversations. So, you know, the, this is the advantage of working with someone like Zen. Yeah. I'm glad um, that they, the though, paid attention to <clears throat> the integration of the theme, and I'm assuming also how the the gameplay itself goes, because the one mm. knock that I've had on any of the spookies that I've played, um, and it's even me looking at the Halloween table, I don't care for all the upper playfield stuff that they do. It to me, it ruins mm. the flow. Um, yeah, you've you've told me that the you're not a big fan of upper. I'm not a big in fan. Previous episode. Um, yeah. The only table of theirs that I really truly liked was Total Nuclear Annihilation. Yep. So because of its simplicity, it's simplicity, but it was flow, 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 and fast, right? Oh, it was. So yeah. again, if if any kind of collaboration comes out of this, uh, it would be nice to be able to tap into Zen and be like, "Hey, what do you think about this?" And then have Zen go, "Well, you know, if you did it like this, then of them go, oh, okay, and we'll figure that out. Yeah. You know, we'll work out the engineering on that. Sure, you know, exactly. Um, so I like I said, it, it's Let's keep our eyeballs peeled on this. Let's see if uh, Rose's Viking wish has anything to do with American Pinball's Valhalla. Uh, again, because that would lead us to general. getting what uh, uh, Oktoberfest maybe and Houdini. Hot Wheels. Is Houdini. Hot Wheels? Am I? Am I? Hot oh, Wheels oh, so Hot Wheels is American. Is American. I'm, I'm correct. That's all the same company, right? Sure is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've played all three of those okay. in person, and they're fun tables. I've not played Hot Wheels. No. I've played uh, Oktoberfest and Houdini. Mm. Uh, a lot on. Yeah. Uh, something else, I, I'll just throw this out there. We didn't, uh, me and Jared didn't even discuss this, uh, but I kind of want to get your take real quick on it, Jared. Uh, mm. Stern, they announced a new Jurassic Park pinball that. Oh, the pin. Uh, yeah. Are they still calling it the pin? Yeah, they are. Okay. Uh, well, it's it's yeah. It's in, yes, they are. This one designed by uh, uh, Deadflip. Mm-hmm. And in terms of the layout and the shots and everything, it screamed late eighties, early nineties to me. Williams. Yeah. Which isn't much. a bad thing. No, it's certainly not a bad thing at all. Um, it certainly looked better than other efforts that I've seen in this budget-minded uh, attitude of when when Stern has put these things out. The interesting thing here is that uh, Dead Flip, he was basically brought in f to try and reinvigorate the design, the standard design that they're using for these the pin machines. Yeah, um, because it's they've recycled the same layout countless times now. Okay. Um, and I think it was getting a bit old and they needed to rethink how they actually do some, do, do this table. And this one, you know, it's got, it's got some different stuff in it. There's like a, there's actually the dinosaur head that actually spits the ball out. Right. And there's what you would think for this price point, which five grand I'll put out there. <laughs> it's five grand. So it's actually pay an extra one and a half or about that and you can get a pro yeah. um um jurassic park which i know what i'd rather buy right and it's not the pin <laughs> but if, for if someone were, who just i'll just say yeah reach, if these were thirty five hundred dollars this would be a whole different discussion yeah absolutely that would be a very different discussion it would be yep yeah, i'm having one of these for the game room yeah um but it it really there's not enough difference in price to actually differentiate this one um, with like a pro version of, of Jurassic Park, which yeah. is a far better game. Um, so it's good, again, that Stern is bringing in different designers and different ways of thinking about how they market their product, um, but also just introducing fresh blood into the design team as yeah. well. And, you know... Dead Flip did create that pinball machine of his own. Um, he's he'd been designing a Whitewood for yes. ages now. This this is not that machine, 
but who knows it may pave the way for him to actually get that design produced mm -hmm. um as a layout um that uh stern could potentially take or at least an adaptive version of because it. it looked like it had some really interesting shots on it um so who knows what the future holds for dead i mean he's put in a lot of effort up until now to get get to where he is yeah so good ultimately, on him for this opportunity ultimately it seems like what we're seeing across pinball in general whether it be at zen with these other uh independent or indie studios is what i'm going to call them as opposed to being the two majors with uh, JJP yeah. and Stern. A um, mm -hmm. lot of fresh blood, young minds uh, doing approach. And not yes. just, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's great JJP hired uh, uh, Steve Ritchie, but it's also like Steve Ritchie's long in the tooth. You know, <laughs> he's very yeah. set in his ways. Um, and you're going to get a certain style out of him as opposed to bringing in people who are like well why do i have to follow these rules can't i that's right shake things up uh so Absolutely. like i said it, it's interesting time that with pinball that obviously it's on the rise big time uh, just based mm. off the prices you can tell that uh we're having like i said at zen alone what is that three or four new designers uh, then you get somebody like, yeah, if you're getting dead flip in there at Stern, I'm sure Stern has, uh, well, they got Keith Elwin who had come in. Um, yeah. You know, you're bringing in fresh perspective, fresh ideas. You've got, uh, with what the guys at Spooky there were saying, how they were like, you know, we had the basic layout for years, but that upper, whole upper play field thing went through like a hundred different iterations. Iterations. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, do you think that Lawler or Richie would ever think to do, even if I'm not a fan of the upper play field that they do, would they ever have gone there? No. So it no still way. is a good thing, uh, you know, to, to have this. Um, it almost reminds me in, in a sort of kind of roundabout way. It's like with the Halloween and the Kaiju tables, it's almost playing homage to um, Pinball Circus. Um, mm, yeah, it's stacked crazy play field mm -hmm. hype thing. Mm -hmm. I almost think that it's got you know a few nods to that concept game that was out that's out there, you know. Yeah. And this is this is a good thing. I mean, those mini play fields aren't super complex in what they offer, but they're still they still get the ball. It's still again from a player's perspective, you really feel like you achieve something if you've got that ball up the top there and you've actually yes. gone through and done everything on those upper play fields like that is a really clear progression for you as a player and that's a that's a cool thing you know yeah um, that's why that's why i always say that i was i'm not a fan of ems because i'm a fan of multi ball and ramps uh yes because i see ramp i want to hit ramp I see yes. the possibility of earning multiple. I want to see what that multiple mode is like. Um, yes. That I'm going to go through lengths to try and achieve those things. Uh, yeah, if you throw you throw play fields at me, well, I do want to see what happens when the ball goes up there. So, yeah, um, of course you do. You naturally want to explore you do. it. You do. And and see what happens when you get there. So, yeah. you know, it's kind of, it's good. I, I really do think they're, they're onto something there. It is. So, I mean... We'll see what happens. I think that, uh, you know, we as primarily digital uh, format for our program, you know, what, what our focus is, uh, mm. it's certainly, we keep on seeing these inroads to how the real machines can come and visit us in the digital format. And I think yep. that uh, that's only going to get stronger as we go along. So uh, we're trying to get Mel on. <laughs> Uh, yeah. it's, it's scheduling, you know, he's, it's hard. He's busy. He's a busy guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and, and to that end as well, <laughs> we are having more and more difficulties trying to line up as well. So yeah. it's, it's yeah. tricky to try and get, uh, time. So that is certainly well, something uh, that, uh, we're working on and, uh, just kind of see if we can just have a general casual pinball conversation with Mel. Cause I think all these things that we discussed today, uh, a lot of it he'd be agreeing with us on 
even though there's things that you'd have to obviously shut his mouth about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you'd I have to so. clam up tight. I can't call it, but um, yeah. Yeah. So we'll see, we'll, we'll see where we go with that. Uh, hopefully that'll be coming up within, I don't know. I'm hoping within the next month, month and a half that we'll have him on again. Hopefully. Um, yeah. See where, where that goes. Uh, beyond that. Okay. I hate doing this. Bo's been bogging me. Bogging me? Bugging mm -hmm. me. Bog, bog, it's been bogging you. Bogging you. Bugging I'm in a bog about this bug. Um, mm. So on our YouTube channel, folks, I really want to pass the 500 subscriber mark. <laughs> We're at like mm. 491 right now. We've been at that number for weeks. <laughs> Probably yeah. months. To, and yeah, I don't know. All the same, I just want to pass that 500 number. So if you're a fan of our show, just do us the favor. Go ahead and just do the subscribe thing. You know us. We don't bug you about this. We It's not the first thing out of our mouths. We don't have little animated things and, and all that crap that interrupt every five minutes. Um, That's right. Just I'm just trying to push past that. So even if you have to make dummy accounts, go for it. I don't care. <laughs> or, you know, if you're a more of a podcast listener, you prefer to digest this from an audio, just jump over to the YouTube channel and, and click subscribe for us. Yeah. Uh, and then not only will you get notified that there's a new episode out, um, you'll know that there's probably an audio one following pretty shortly thereafter. So, yeah. you know, it'll be good forewarning for you. So there's our there's our rare pitch that we do. Uh, but like I said, I watched that number and I'm like, just pass. Just go past it, please. Uh, you know, we're not going to get one of those cool nifty little plaques anytime soon because that's... That would be uh, two more zeros on the back end of the 500. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're not going to get there anytime. But uh, I, no, we, we, we have realistic end. expectations. Yeah, we, have we, we really definitely good. have realistic expectations. <laughs> we know the show. I don't know. You know what we should do, Jared? What's we that? should we should do a a true crime podcast based around pinball, like Who Done It or something. I don't know because the you know the true crime things are all the rage. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There yeah. was one ball on the table. Could they <laughs> murder the score? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know like how those things go. I don't listen to that. Well, I, I mean, it doesn't help that I was just watching. A, a, there's a, a show with Steve Martin and Martin Short called uh, Only Murders in the Building. And it's about... They were huge fans of these true crime podcasts. And then there is a murder in their building. And they were like, well, hey... We actually live here. Why don't we try solving this? And so then they create their own mm. true crime podcast and fumble about doing <laughs> it. And I, I can feel the the struggles when they were like, "We've got eleven fans." Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, the struggle is real. Yes, where I couldn't understand the struggle was when all of a sudden they got a sponsor who forked over fifty thousand dollars. Um, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, but... we still haven't really felt mm. that yet. No, no, no. That'd be a nice <laughs> feeling to get though. It would be. We're, yeah. we're happy getting, you know, early access to, like, the Snoopy table that we've had for the past week. Um, yeah, that, that's nice. It that's is very nice. nice, actually. Yeah, you yeah. know. All right. That being said, I think we're going to uh, close this one out. Uh, again, thanks for your patience for, uh, you know, letting my throat clear up and uh, give us things to talk about in the meantime. Until Yeah, I think it's then, worked well that we, you know... What were you gonna say? I was gonna say I think it's it's lined up well with the pinball show, so we actually had some some actual news news to talk about. True, <laughs> true that. You know. Until then, we'll contemplate what to talk about, but I'm sure it'll be about one of these things, Jared. Stuff and things. Until then, bye bye. See you later. <laughs>